common sense and the way of dealing with problems in their smallest state before they grow bigger and become fatal. Welcome to HSC tutorial. The topic is risk assessment. You are watching Safety First and I'm your host, Javed Singh. If you are new on this channel, as usual, I request to subscribe the channel, kindly share and like. Let us jump on the topic. Prior to understand what is risk assessment, it is mandatory to know what is risk. Risk is the possibility of an unfortunate occurrence. Risk is the combination or multiplication of probability and magnitude, severity of consequences. In simpler way, you can say there are three things in the risk. First, what can happen, a scenario. Second, the probability or the frequency, how likely is it? And the third one, and the outcome of the probability and the scenario is consequence. How bad is it? This is the most simpler definition of risk. If you want to know more details about the risk, you can click the link at the top and you can watch full HSC tutorial about hazard and risk. Let us see what is risk assessment. Risk assessment is a term used to describe the overall process or method where you identify hazards and risk factors that have the potential to cause harm. It means first step in the risk assessment is hazard identification. Number two, analyze and evaluate the risk associated with the hazard. This is risk analysis and risk evaluation. Number two, determine appropriate ways to eliminate the hazard or control the risk when the hazard cannot be eliminated. This is the third step in the risk assessment and this means how to control the risk. Risk assessment has two methods, quantitative and qualitative. In this video, I'll not discuss what are the methods of risk assessment. There are five steps of risk assessment. Step number one, identify the hazards. Step number two, decide who might be harmed and how. Step number three, evaluate the risks and decide on precautions. Step number four, record your findings and implement them. Step number five, review your risk assessment and update if necessary. Now we will discuss in detail the five steps and hopefully you are able to understand what is risk assessment and what are the steps. Number one, identify the hazards. But before identify the hazards, we need to memorize what is hazard. Hazard might be any source, situation or act. Having the potential to cause harm, injury, ill health or damage, that is called hazard. There are six main types of hazards. Number one, biological, virus, bacteria, insects, animals that can cause health impacts. All these comes under the category of biological hazards. For example, blood-borne diseases such as HIV, hepatitis B and C and malaria that can be transmitted through contacted with infected blood or bodily fluids and other harmful plants, sewage, dust and worm. All are the examples of biological hazards. Number two, chemical hazards. Hazardous substances which may cause both health and physical impacts such as skin irritation, respiratory system irritation, blindness, corrosion or explosion comes under the category of 
chemical hazards and this is number two type of hazards number three physical hazards physical hazards are environmental factors that can harm an employee without necessarily touching them including heights noise radiation and pressure number four safety hazards these are the hazards that create unsafe working conditions for example exposed wires or a damaged carpet might result in a tripping hazard these are sometimes included under the category of physical hazards too number five ergonomic ergonomic hazards are a result of physical factors that can result in musculoskeletal injuries for example a poor workstation set up in an office poor posture and manual handling all the examples of ergonomic hazards number 6 psychosocial psychosocial hazards include those that can have an adverse effect on an employee's mental health or well-being for example sexual harassment victimization stress and workplace violence so number one step is to identify the hazards to identify the hazards six main types of hazards this is depending on the nature of the project but at every work site there are thousands of hazards the result of the hazard is risk gravitational falls fall from height are on the same level struck by moving objects motor vehicles caught between caught in or cut by thermal burns contact with pathogens exposure to fumes gases dust particulate matter exposure to corrosive toxic noxious caustic allergic or carcinogenic materials chances of electrical shock burn explosion of compressed gas cylinders asphyxiation drowning hypothermia heat stress or frostbite exposure with radiations animal attacks bites or stings noise wind or stored energy ergonomics static posture or the oxygen deficiency this might be the resultant of the hazard or the hazard itself so all these hazards have the potential to cause harm has the potential to cause injury has the potential to cause ill health or has the potential to cause damage how to find the hazards by studying sds safety data sheets coming with all the chemicals manufacturer instructions and recommendations all the plants and the machinery they have their booklet how to operate and what is the safe pressure what is the safe temperature how to utilize it how to maintain it how to service it by maintenance records injury record ill health data near miss record audits either internal or external inspections surveys and the sampling record all is helpful to find the hazards now let us see step number two decide who might be harmed and how who is at risk this is the question here young workers and trainees they are at risk temporary workers they are at risk new or expectant mothers or the people with the disabilities night shift workers including late evening workers can be at greater risk as more violent incident occur at night time maybe lone workers can be at greater risk as they do not have the support of colleagues who can act as a deterrent to a potential assailant or provide immediate help and support if there is a problem also if there is violent incident and the member of the staff is injured it may take longer for help to arrive other than the categories mentioned above you have to think about people who might not be in the workplace all the time such as visitors contractors and maintenance workers take members of the public into account if they could be hurt by your activities to share your workplace with another business or another company or subcontractor consider how your work affects others and how their work affects you and your workers our workforce talk to each other and make sure controls are in place ask your workers if 
there is anyone you may have missed because the workers they have more experience and if you will consult and coordinate with your experienced workers maybe something is missing and they can easily identify and you can include in the risk assessment process number 3 in the series of five steps third step is evaluate the risks and decide on precautions so first look at what you are already doing and the control measures you have in place ask yourself can i get rid of hazard altogether if not how can i control the risk so that harm is unlikely some practical steps you could take to reduce the hazards you have identified include try a less risky option prevent access to the hazards organize your work to reduce exposure to the hazard issue personal protective equipment provide welfare facilities such as first aid and washing facilities involve and consult with staff improving health and safety need not cost a lot for instance placing a mirror on a dangerous blind corner to help prevent vehicle accident is a low cost precaution considering the risk failure to take simple precaution can cost you a lot more if an accident does happen involve staff so that you can be sure that what you propose to do will work in practice and wouldn't introduce any new hazards consult your employees on health and safety step number 4 once you identify the hazards you identify who is being harmed and how then you find the existing control measures and the gaps in between now you have to record your findings and implement this is the fourth step of the risk assessment employers with five or more staff are required to record in writing the main findings of the risk assessment this record should include details of any hazard noted in the risk assessment and action taken to reduce or eliminate risk remember it is action and not paperwork that protects people risk assessment is a means to an end not an end in itself you will need to prioritize and may want to think in this way can i use more than one measure the combination of measures may be more effective than relying on just one can i use a mixture of both short and long term measures that will get the both quick wins and longer term effectiveness how will staff react to these measures how do i demonstrate the value of the measures what are the potential negative aspects of the measures how much will these intervention cost in comparison to their effective control measures don't always have to be expensive but to be effective once you have decided what measures you need to do to keep your site safe and keep your staff safe you need to put them into action remember paperwork on its own makes no difference only when you have taken action will you be protecting people appoint a responsible person to ensure the actions are carried out ensure the measures are realistic and agreed within a specific time scale decide how you will effectively and consistently inform instruct and train staff in the implementation of these measures so this is the number four step that is related to the findings of the risk assessment and this is the way how you will implement the findings number 5 review your risk assessment and update if necessary nothing stays the same forever this is universal truth few workplaces stay the same sooner or later you will bring in a new equipment substances and procedures that could lead to new hazards so it makes sense to review what you are doing on an ongoing basis look at your risk assessment again and ask yourself have there been any significant changes have there been any significant changes are there improvements you still need to make have your workers spotted a problem have you learned anything from accidents near misses work related ill health physical and mental reports sickness absence data or employee surveys you are watching safety first and today's topic is risk assessment and this is step number 5 review your risk assessment and update if necessary make sure your risk assessment stays up to date companies 
should review their risk assessments and risk management practices once every three years or uh, whenever there is any significant changes to workplace processes or design. Remember, thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle. It means happiness never decreases by being shared. Often the difference between a successful person and a failure is not one has better abilities or ideas, but the courage that one has to bet on one's ideas, to take a calculated risk and to act that leads to success. Gentlemen, if you are thinking you are too small to make a difference, try to sleep with a mosquito and that's it. You are nothing more. Training session is over here. If you have any question, ask the question in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and share. I'll see you soon with the new HSC topic. Till then, good luck and Allah Hafiz.